Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to cover the proxy design pattern. Now if you've watched my decorator design pattern, hopefully you understand what how that solves, but primarily the, re the primary reason why I'm mentioning it here is because uh, I found it personally difficult to distinguish between the two, and hopefully in this video I can not only explain to you what the proxy design pattern is, as well as kind of draw the line between the two. And that's why I'm gonna start off, you know, what the decorator pattern is, just injecting functionality in a very composable way. Proxy pattern is controlling access to an object. Sounds very different. Injecting functionality, controlling access to an object. Once you take a look at the implementation, it may look very, very similar. However, some of the things are quite different and particularly the thinking, how you wanna think about it. So let's go over some of the implementation details and why it can be similar. So we have some kind of abstraction. We then have some kind of concretion and the concretion proxy, the thing that's gonna like point to, to the concretion, we do not put it through the constructor that will kind of imply that with the decorator pattern, we know what we want to give functionality to and it's kind of like a switch. With the concretion proxy, with the proxy, we do not put the thing inside of it. That means creating the thing before we create the, uh, the proxy. That is wrong, right? So the proxy should control access to the thing it just basically hides it. So it's like you can swap the proxy in, but you do not create the concretion before you create the proxy. The proxy controls the concretion, right? In the decorator pattern, we already know what we want to extend. We pass it in and then we may take that decorated abstraction. And we just like chain these decorators as much as we want, to, depending on what functionality we want to keep like throwing into the bucket. Uh, so the concretion and note is known. It can be a runtime decision and uh, we can override the functionality of the concretion or the abstraction. Uh, with the proxy, we simulate it. So there was some kind of behavior from our abstraction and our concretion. The concretion proxy, the reason for even having a proxy stems not through from a thinking model where the decorator, you would like inject stuff and it's a chainable thing. With the proxy, you want to go ahead and just pick up the concretion and place your proxy and it's as if nothing has changed, right? So you're like just substituting it, but you don't necessarily want to chain proxies because that, that's not the point. They usually solve some kind of performance or infrastructure problem, right? So decorator is more about how you think in terms of information and how it flows. Proxy is closer to an infrastructural bound. An example that was brought in in the Gang of Four book is that you may not want to load the whole image straight away, have a pointer to the image, and then when you actually need to override it, that's when you like uh, load it from memory, you start buffering it, and then you commit it, right? So it, it can be like lazy evaluation, fetching something from a remote server, right? So again, uh, I, the way that I think about it and may not be correct, you can tell me in the comments how you think about it. But for me, a proxy is more like infrastructure bound. A decorator is more, more thinking model bound where we are chaining functionality, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the proxy implementations or types of proxies that you can have. So the first one that is described in the book is the remote proxy. So we have some kind of settings. We implement those settings, right? So we can get some kind of config. What happens is instead of hard coding the settings in the settings, we are like, all right, let's store it in the app setting. Now we say, all right, we actually want to confer, uh, we want to configure the application from like an API, right? So you have a separate UI with a database and it fetches it either from the API or straight from the database. And we need to point to that place wherever it's getting from, right? So remote the settings are not where you think they are. And again, this is infrastructure, infrastructurally bound. Our software should really be oblivious that it's running on a computer. I know it, that's not true and you get all kinds of leaking abstractions of the, of the computer like interfering with your program and having like effect on it. But let's say we don't know that the computer exists. The point of the proxy is that we wanna maintain that illusion, but it's usually what causes us to create a proxy, right? So with the remote settings, we might get a constructor where we pass some ad address like host and the port or a, a connection string, and then we initialize our settings from there, right? So we got the config, and now when we're using the remote settings, we're just uh, doing that, right? Comparing this to the decorator, this is not a runtime decision to kind of flip a switch. Okay, now we're like loading it from here. This is more of a concrete compile time 
this is the direction we're choosing to take our software in. And in the future, we may swap it for something different. So that's our flexibility. It's something that potentially may need optimization and we really don't know where it might be located in the end. This is the remote one. This is where it might be somewhere on disk. It may be on two disks. So you will need to grab your configuration from two disks. You may need to grab it from the Redis cache and you may need to grab it from your database or backend. The proxy will decide where you need it. Right? And it will try to maintain the illusions of the settings that you just have this object somewhere there in memory. Now we have a virtual proxy. Virtual proxy is essentially lazy initialization. I'm not sure why it's called virtual, but here we have lazy remote settings. So same as the remote settings where we have lazy remote settings. So instead of instantiating our settings in the constructor, like we do here, here we're essentially saying, right, just go fetch. I understand this is not asynchronous and it doesn't look too realistic, but I'm just trying to explain the way of thinking here in the constructor. We already make the call. We initialize the settings and we're using them straight away. So whenever we instantiate the remote settings, we already perform the work to get them. So this is assuming we will use it a hundred percent virtual proxy defers the work. So this is the example that they primarily used in the gang of four book where they were deferring the loading of the file until it's actually going to be used. Okay. But other than that, they just like sort of created a pointer to the file and they kept track of like, okay, this is the file that we're going to load in case we need it. So once it's actually needed, we loaded it. So this is the same thing until we actually try to get the config. Don't do anything. Otherwise the instantiation is going to be long, but then we offload that work and we kind of cache it once we do actually load the settings. All right. So that's virtual is when we defer. There is also a lazy class available in C sharp that kind of relates to this. So let's say string lazy string where we provide a value where la right later on you can grab the value, right? So let's say we'll dump it with a something like a to make sure that we only create it once. And then we'll grab the value and then we'll grab it again. Let's say we'll just assign it to B and then we'll assign this one to C. We'll run this. And what's going to happen is you're going to see a executed only once and that's executed only the first time that we call B, right? So whenever we try to get the value the first time when we assign it to B, that's when it's executed. The second time we get the value, the value is already cached. So we just get the value. So this is kind of like a virtual proxy, but like an implementation that C sharp provides to you. Okay. Let's go to a protection proxy. This is another implementation that they described in the book. Again, we still have the settings and love it. So now what can happen is we can have protected settings against they, they implement the I settings interface, but now what I'm doing is I'm injecting an auth service. I'm not doing any lazy in, uh, instantiation here. So, you know, I might just be gra grabbing the config from wherever the local file or the hard coded one. And what's going to happen is my auth service is going to have some logic to de determine who I am. And now we kind of position ourselves in the middle between the configuration and whatever was using it. And now we're kind of in the way and we may even restrict the fetch of uh, the get config, right? So this is the protection proxy. This is basically just like restricts access and bringing in functionality that way. So again, this is how it can be confused with the decorator pattern. The fact that we are just overriding the same object and we re-implement the function with some additional properties, right? And we still call in into the original object. The main thing that I want you to understand here is that the proxy is a compile time decision for your program to do something a certain way. And the fact that it's called a proxy is because you had this original object in place and then you swap it out for the proxy. But the proxy is referencing that original object internally. It just may defer its creation. It may restrict access to it or it may load it from some location that's not on the computer. It's not meant for composability. It's meant to overcome the infrastructure layer bleeding into your application and kind of maintain that illusion that we're not using a computer. We just have free flowing information. Now let's take a look at a microservices example. On the left hand side, we have our servers. These can be part of a cluster. Some virtual machines, they may be the same virtual machine doing the same work or not. 
the point is they may have the same mechanic of loading settings, right? So they may have some kind of iSettings interface here where they load stuff asynchronously and properly, and they may all load it from the Redis cache. Originally, what could have happened is that they were loading it all internally, but then let's say we want to be able to centralize it and share it and maybe edit this configuration on the fly to affect all the other machines. Let's say a new node is getting spun up of one of these machines. We update the Redis cache and now, oops, uh, these machines are aware of this node, right? And they can communicate it to it because we now added an extra record, record to the configuration. Now let's say, same as in the adapter pattern, we want to update this. This would mean we'd have to roll out all the other services. This means we would have to update all of the services that are consuming this uh, strategy of getting the configuration. Let's introduce a proxy, an adapter sort of thing, although we're not adapting to a third party dependency. This is kind of what, like what the adapter is for me. We have some third party dependency. We want to fit into our business model with a proxy. It's more or less the same thing in a microservices scenario. This can also be called as an ambassador. And uh, what you have is these machines talking to this ambassador machine proxy adapter and the ambassador machine will implement all kinds of things like retrying policies, fallback policies. Let's say we'll try to get the configuration from the Redis cache. Redis cache explodes. We then try to get it from some kind of API service. This explodes. We, God forbid, get it from the bucket, right? Or maybe some database object. Well, not object storage. What's a document storage or something like that. So now if we do want to update the proxy or swap out the proxy, we do not have to fiddle with any of these machines, right? We do not have to like roll out it with an updated package and we do not have to update a bunch of different code bases. We now update the one code base that is responsible for this service and we go ahead and, you know, put additional functionality into it. And same as before, the proxy here maintains the illusion of storage. We don't know which other component we're using behind the proxy, as well as this client maintains the illusion that we are using this proxy here. So there are small proxies here, which are each individual ones for those machines, maybe which are responsible for maintaining this level of illusion. This proxy maintains this level of illusion. Okay, hopefully you like my drawing and this will be it. Whoa, hold up. Look, this is the stuff I used to torture myself on the weekends. Now, it takes time to digest this and package it up into these videos. So if you did enjoy the content, please like, subscribe if you wanna see more, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you want to be part of the community that I'm building, make sure to join my Discord server. I also stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays, 6 o'clock London time. I have also opened up a merch store. So if you do want to support me, don't just donate. Buy from there. Links to all of that and my other social media are in the description. Hope to see you again and have a good day.